Egypt is an ancient and mysterious land. It was considered mysterious even during the time of Cleopatra, who had archaeologists working at the site of the pyramids, trying to work out where they came from. Many of the secrets of Egypt are yet to be discovered, and some of the most mysterious of them are in this video. Enjoy! If you're interested in all things ancient Egypt, you've probably heard of the Valley of the Kings. You're less likely to have heard of the Valley of the Queens. This is the place where the wives of the great pharaohs were buried, and is also known as Taset Neferu. The name roughly translates into English as the Place of Beauty. There isn't as much left of the Valley of the Queens as we'd like there to be. Most of the remaining tombs are inside the main wadi, which runs alongside the Valley of the Rope and the Valley of the Three Pits. At least 91 tombs exist in the valley, although it's highly likely there are more that haven't yet been discovered. All of the burials date to the 18th Dynasty era of Egypt, which began in 1550 BCE and ended in 1292 BCE with the death of Horemheb. Historians and Egyptologists have always wondered why this particular site was chosen for the burial of the queens, rather than entombing them with their husbands. Nobody has yet come up with a convincing answer to that question. Our next mystery is most commonly known as the Offering Table of Dedfji. Whether that's a fair name for it or not is unknown, because we know virtually nothing about it. You'll find it in the Leiden Museum of Antiquities in the Netherlands, where it's been since 1830. It's an alabaster disc, probably a tabletop, that was created around 5,000 years ago. What makes it so unusual is the complex series of designs and inscriptions that cover its surface, which remind some observers of a circuit board, or possibly even a series of control panels. There are a few small holes drilled into the surface of the disc, which would possibly have provided a space for candles to be inserted into it, or possibly for oils to be stored. An object with such a humble purpose surely wouldn't have been decorated so elaborately, though. What are these markings? Might they be instructions of some kind? If we could understand them, would they tell us what the disc was used for? Historians say that it probably had a religious or ceremonial purpose, but then again, that's what historians tend to say about every artifact that they don't understand. So many amazing artifacts have been discovered in Egypt that occasionally, some of them get lost. That's what happened to this incredible 4,000-year-old Egyptian manuscript, which got lost in a storage box inside the Museum of Cairo only to be rediscovered, covered in dust, in 2015. By that time, it had been considered missing for more than 70 years. The manuscript is made of leather, more than 8 feet long, and is thought to be the oldest of its kind. The illustrations of supernatural beings on its surface predate the world-famous ones seen in the Book of the Dead. Aside from being the oldest Egyptian leather manuscript ever found, it's also the longest. Experts say that the manuscript is religious in nature and contains spells that would have been read aloud or recited by a priest. Detailed descriptions of funerary and temple rites also appear in the manuscript some of which are the only descriptions of those specific rituals ever to be found. That's not surprising because leather disintegrates over time, and so most ancient leather documents like this have long since crumbled to dust. There are many examples of ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs that contain images that seem otherworldly. Frequent depictions of animal-headed creatures and strange objects in the sky have long fed beliefs that the ancient Egyptians were visited by extraterrestrials. But there's a more terrestrial appearance to some of the hieroglyphs that appear in the Temple of Seti the first at Abydos. The confusing thing is that the terrestrial objects they represent should have been unknown to the people of the era. Take a good long look at these carvings and try to tell us that they don't look like helicopters. The helicopters appear to be surrounded by other flying vehicles, which some people have interpreted as either missiles or planes. We've been able to translate the text beneath them as, He who repulses the nine enemies of Egypt. 
Perhaps repulsing those nine enemies was a lot easier when you had a fleet of helicopters on your side and your enemies had little more than sticks and stones. Scientists have dismissed the idea that these could be images of helicopters, but can't offer any alternative explanations. Sticking with the theme of mysterious ancient Egyptian symbols, let's look at the Serpopard. That's a modern name that's been given to a mythical creature that repeatedly appears in ancient Egyptian art. The creature appears to have the body of a leopard, and the long neck and head of a serpent, hence the name Serpopard. Which is a portmanteau of the two creatures. While the image often appears in ancient texts, as we've already said, none of those ancient texts gives a name to the creature. It's almost like it's forbidden knowledge. Most serpopards appear on cosmetic palettes made during Egypt's pre-dynastic period more than 5,000 years ago. The similarity between these symbols and other symbols used as cylinder seals during Mesopotamia's proto-literate period 5,500 years ago has been noted, but it's not known if there's a connection. The best-known example of the symbol can be found on the Narmer palette. Some historians believe it to be a symbol of the chaos that existed beyond Egyptian borders, which must be tamed by the king. But that's probably a little too fanciful. We are already seeing that the ancient Egyptians were such a mysterious people that we'll probably never be able to unravel all their secrets. Their rituals and rites are an enigma to us, and that enigma deepened with the discovery of the so-called Falcon Shrine in October 2022. The unusual shrine, which depicts hitherto unknown ancient rituals and practices, was discovered during planned archaeological excavations in Berenike. This was once a thriving Greco-Roman seaport, full of traders, and is also known as both Berenice and Berenice Troglodytica. Archaeological evidence suggests that the shrine was created somewhere between the 4th and 6th centuries, during which time the city was partially controlled by a nomadic eastern desert culture called the Blemies. The harpoons and cube-shaped statues seen on the shrine are offerings that were specific to the Blemies and their beliefs. The Falcon Shrine is so named because of the 15 falcons that were found buried with it, all of which were accompanied by their eggs. To make things even weirder, there's an inscription which reads, It is forbidden to boil a head in here. We have to presume that's a reference to animal heads because the alternative is gruesome. Most historians and scientists agree that the three pyramids of Giza are about 4,600 years old. Why then were symbols that appear to represent the three pyramids painted onto the side of an ostrich egg 5,000 years ago? Hunting ostriches and taking their eggs as trophies was a common leisure activity for Egyptians during pre-dynastic times, but that's not really what we're discussing here. This troubling egg was found in a Nubian tomb, created by the Nakata culture more than 5,000 years ago. It can be scientifically proven that the egg is 5,000 years old. The age of the pyramids cannot be scientifically proven because they're made of stone, and you can't carbon date stone. It's hard to deny that the paintings represent the pyramids because the Nile is visible, running down the correct side of them based on their position. The only sensible conclusion to reach is that we've got it wrong about the age of the pyramids, and they were built at least four centuries earlier than we currently believe. That means we have to forget almost everything we think we know about them and start again. While we're talking about pyramids, let's talk about one that you might never have heard of before. It's the Pyramid of Jedefri, which is today little more than a set of ruins in Abu Rawash. It's the northernmost pyramid ever built in Egypt, as far as we're aware, and most historians say it was built by Jadefri, son and heir to King Khufu 4,500 years ago. It's obvious that the pyramid was never finished, but we don't know why it was never finished, or how close to being finished it got. It was thought for a long time that it was only about one-third complete at best, but more recent studies carried out by Michael Baud from the Louvre 
concluded that it was well over half finished at the time the construction work mysteriously stopped. Had it ever been completed, it would have been roughly the same size and shape as the Pyramid of Menkare in Giza. Legends say it was more beautiful than the Pyramids of Egypt, with an exterior made of imported granite that had been polished and a large pyramidion on top. These legends require the pyramid to have been finished, though. So why do they exist if we're so sure that it wasn't? We're not done talking about lesser-known pyramids yet, because we've got another one to discuss. Or rather, something that was found close to it. We're talking about the Medium Pyramid, which is 4,600 years old and has almost completely collapsed. It was the site of a mysterious discovery in February 2009, when the skeletal remains of a 13-year-old girl were found there. She was found buried in what was described as a squatting position inside a tomb at the foot of the pyramid. No other bodies have ever been found inside or even close to the Medium Pyramid, which archaeologists believe may have been built for the pharaoh Snefru over 4,500 years ago. If the pyramid was built for Snefru, it begs the question of who this girl was. Might she have been his daughter? If so, shouldn't there have been some grave goods buried with her, along with inscriptions that might identify her? The discovery is interesting because it seems so out of place, and the mystery of her identity hasn't been resolved in the years since it happened. The pyramids of Egypt are well known for their lack of human remains, which leads many people to question whether they were ever really tombs at all. Sometimes archaeological artifacts are exactly what they sound like. That's the case with the colossal statues of Akhenaten at East Karnak. They're massive statues, they're in East Karnak, and they depict the 18th dynasty pharaoh Akhenaten. The king was also known as Amenhotep IV and Amenhofish IV, so he was a man of many names. That isn't especially uncommon for an ancient Egyptian king, but what's uncommon about these statues is that they're distorted. That's atypical for statues made in Egypt 3,350 years ago, and is generally unusual for Egyptian statues of any era. The statues were broken into fragments when they were found, but they've been put back together and are now in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. The largest of them, when complete, would have been over 40 feet tall and depicted the pharaoh with a bloated stomach, skinny arms, and elongated facial features. Another of the sculptures shows the pharaoh nude, but without genitals. For an artist to depict the pharaoh in such an apparently unflattering way would be tantamount to suicide. But there's no way that statues of such size were made without the king's approval. If there's a symbolic meaning to the distortions, we don't understand it. We're back to mysterious symbols again now. More specifically, we're talking about the sacred symbol of the Djed pillar. It's not an actual pillar. It's a symbol that looks like a pillar with three crossbars. While we've successfully translated enough ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs to understand the language, we've never been able to make sense of this enigmatic symbol. One of the more out there theories about its meaning is that it represents the spine of the great god Osiris, based on a myth about Osiris becoming entombed inside a coffin around which a tree grew, only for the tree to become a pillar of a palace with the coffin still inside it. Egyptian myths are nothing if they're not colorful. According to that interpretation, the symbol represents stability. Another interpretation is that it's a fertility symbol, which is why it's often surrounded by reeds or trees. It's tempting to believe the fertility theory, but amulets bearing the Djed pillar have sometimes been found near the spines of mummies in their sarcophagi. The bizarre tale of the spine of Osiris is, therefore, more likely. But that doesn't tell us what it specifically means. We might never know. The Rhind Papyrus is both a remarkable and important document because of what it tells us about ancient Egyptian knowledge of mathematics. Rhind isn't an Egyptian name. The document takes its name from the fact that it was purchased in Luxor in 1858 by the Scottish antiquarian Henry Rhind. 
Scientists have dated the papyrus to around 1550 BCE, when it was written by a scribe named Amesh. Amesh worked hard on the script. It's more than 16 feet long. He opens with an introduction, proclaiming that the manuscript will provide, and this is a direct translation, an accurate reckoning for inquiring into things and the knowledge of all things, mysteries, and secrets. The text is divided into sections, with the first section dealing with arithmetic and algebra, and the second section dealing with geometry. A third section labeled miscellany contains problems that aren't mathematical in nature and largely talks about food preparation. The contents of the first two sections are entirely correct and remarkably sophisticated. If this was taught to Egyptian children, they would have a greater knowledge of mathematics than children at most schools in the developed world today. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.